Hello friends, welcome to the video tutorial of ASP.NET MVC file. In this video, we are going to study the basic database operations that is crude operations. And for that we are using entity framework 6 and again we are following the database first approach. Now if you are not familiar with entity framework and database first approach, I already uploaded a tutorial of entity framework. Now let us see this part practically. Now let us see our database design. See I already created one database that is mydb. It has two tables, one is cities and another one is areas. Now area has these four fields and we are going to perform all the crude operation on our area table. Okay. So let us switch to and here one more thing our area id field is identity field. So its value will be automatically generated and incremented by one. So we have to input a value for area name, city id and pin code only. So let us switch to Visual Studio. So as you can see here, I already created one application that is crude. Okay. I added one area controller also and there are some action methods. The basic action methods are also defined. Definitely we are going to change this part. Now the first step is to create an entity data model using database first approach. So for that, what we have to do? Just right click over your project and say add new item. Okay. Now from data tab, okay. suppose you are initially on web tab, you have to switch to the data tab and from this data tab you will select ADO.NET entity data model. Okay. Now specify the model name. So it can be anything since my database contain the information related to the location, I will specify my model name as location. Now here three options are given to you that represents database first approach, model first approach and this rest of the tools represent core first approach. Since we are using database first approach, I am choosing the first option that is entity framework designer from database. Now in next window, it will allow you to choose your data connection. If it is already present, then you can select it from the drop down. Here it is not present that's why I am going to create a new connection. So right, uh, so click over here, specify the server name. On my machine it is SQL Express. So according to your machine you can specify your server name. I am using window authentication. So I, I will select this option. If you are using SQL server authentication, select this option and specify the username and password also. Now here I have to specify my database name. You can select it from drop down also. So here I will say mydb. Now say test connection. So it is succeeded. Say ok. Now as you can see here my connection string will appear here. Ok. And it is asking you to save your connection string in web.config file or not. Okay, if you tick, tick this option, this connection string gets stored in your web.config file and the name will be mydb entities. You can change it also. So I am keeping the same name. So click over next button. Now it will allows you to choose the entity framework version. We are using entity framework 6.0 or 6.x. So click this option and say next. Now here it will allow you to select the database objects that you want to include in your entity data model. So currently we only have a tables and we want both the tables to include it in our model. So I will select this option. Okay. And this two option that is pluralize and include foreign key column. All these options are explained in my entity framework tutorial. So for more details you can refer to that tutorial. Now say finish. So it may take a time because it is currently installing entity framework in your application. Okay. Now since my web.config file is open, it is asking me to reload it. I will say yes. Now as you can see here, see this connection string get added mydb entities. This is the connection string. Okay. As well as provider is also added that is system.data. SQL client. Okay. Now this is your entity data model in design view. Okay. Where there are two entities and there is relationship also and it is one to many relationship. Now it has the scalar properties. Uppermost properties are scalar and these two are the 
navigation property. Now you can see the code of these classes in this location. See, these two are our entity classes, city and area. So, see, this city has these two scalar property and this single navigation property. Just ignore this part. This is automatically generated by the .NET framework. Now, area has this four scalar property and this city is navigational property. Now, we have one context clause also, which is also very important, okay, because it keeps the track of all the changes on your entities. Now, see, look at here. This is your context class, my DB entities. Why it is context class? Because it is inherited from DB context class. Okay. Now here in the constructor, it is calling to its base class constructor where it is specifying that to fetch the connection string from web.config file. And this mydb entities is nothing but your connection string name in your web.config file. Look at here. What is the name of your connection string? MyDB entity. If you change it here, definitely you have to make a change here also. Hmm? Now, this is also the important properties. So, as you can see here, there are two entity models and for both the entity models, two properties are added in your context class and both the properties are of type DB set. So, DB set class is used to add delete entities from the database. Okay. Now, let us switch to our controller that we already created. Let me close all the files. Now, as you can see here, I specified few action methods. One is index, then another one is create, then edit and delete to perform all the crude operation. So, what index action method will do? Index action method will list all the existing areas in our database. Okay. Create action method will have to uh, overload first action method will generate a create view whereas the second create action method will accept the data of an area and will save it to the database whereas edit will also show you the selected record which user can edit and delete action method will delete the selected record okay so we are going to see this part step by step so first of all we will complete our index method now to all these three methods we need a object of our context class and as i told you our context class name is what mydb entities so what we have to do we have to create an object of mydb entities class which is our context class so let us create it let it be public because it is required by all the methods all the action methods so mydb entities db is equal to new mydb entities okay so that's it now first of all we will complete our index action method Okay, so what index action method will do? It will list all the areas. So what I have to do? I have to read all the areas. Now from where I can get all the areas? So our mydb context class, so mydb entities context class has areas property, which is of type db set. So this areas property will return all the list of areas in my database. Now here I'll collect it in my i enumerable collection. So it is of type area, right? So LST area. So DB areas is nothing but a collection of areas. So we collected it in I enumerable areas and we are going to create a strongly type view. So what I have to do? I have to pass this model that is LST area to my view. Now let us create our view. So right click over here and say add view. So here we are going to take a help of template and there is one ready-made template that is list template. What it does? It will write or generate a HTML to in the table form. Okay. But here you have to specify the model class also to which you want to bind. So I want to bind to area model. Okay. And since we use list template, okay, since we use list template, it automatically choose the model of type I enumerable area. Okay. Say add look at here model declaration that is i enumerable area 
one action link is added that is nothing but your anchor tag okay that will navigate you to the create view a create action method and then in turn create action method will display you a create view now here your table tag start this is nothing but a headings and using for each loop the data from my model is generated okay now our last td has some action links again which are for edit and delete so this is your action name sorry this is your link text and this is your action method name now here all the three action methods are accepting the parameter so we have to specify our parameter name as id and the value of that id is coming from our item dot area id okay so you can write this code manually also so anonymous class is created to specify the parameter of our action method and we already studied this part right now here instead of city id suppose i want to display the city name what i can do item dot city dot city name we can take a help of this navigation property okay so let us run this part first and then after we will complete rest of the code look at here so it is showing you the area name city name pin code and these are the action links which is nothing but your anchor tag here also there is create new anchor tag okay now we will complete the coding of this create means whenever i click on this create link a create view should get open where it will allow you to enter the details of areas and when you click on the submit button the list of uh, sorry the area details should get stored to the table and again it is redirected to this index view okay so i hope you got the procedure Hmm. now here as you can see here so the table headings are not quite readable and not user friendly so what you can do you can directly specify this table heading instead of this you can directly write it over here say area name here suppose i want to say city and here pin code so you can alter this part definitely now let us refresh this look at here okay now it is perfect now let us switch to our controller and let us complete a create code so to create a code first of all we have to design a view that will accept the details from the user so let us add a view and here also we are going to take a help of scaffolding so here i'll choose a create template and i'll specify the model class to create a strongly type view now what this technique does or what this template does it will create a form using strongly type html helpers because my view is strongly type view as you can see here see at the rate model area look at here html dot begin form is also specified hmm? validation summary is also created even it uses the html helper only single html helper is used that is editor for to accept the input then validation message for is also used okay now suppose you want to use a uh, text box for or text area for specific html helpers definitely you can use it so this is generated by scaffolding technique that's why it use only a single html helper that is editor for and depending on our property data type the html tag is generated now here for city id we want a drop down list here there again there is editor for okay so what we want we want to allow user to select the cities from a drop down and from that drop down the value of city id will be posted to my server so what we will do from our area controller and in our from our action method create action method we will pass a list of cities to our view using view back so here i'll say view back dot city list so this is just a key you can specify any name so how will i get a list of cities a db dot cities exactly in the same way how you fetch the areas in this statement 
okay here okay now here i paste the cities and as i assign it to my view bag now let us create a drop down using html helper so html dot drop down help drop down list for so we want to create it for city id then second argument will be select list now to the select list constructor i have to specify my i enumerable collection which is in my view bag so view bag dot city list then specify the value field and text field so my value field is city id and text field is text field is city name so you can confirm it from your entity models look at here it is city id and city name okay so we are right now next we have to specify the option label that is select city okay then the html attributes are specified so that's it now what we are going to do now we are going to write a post version or post method of a create action method so http post public action result create now using the complex binding we are going to collect the data okay so my view is strongly typed view and it is binded to my area model so definitely i'll get area model as an argument okay now here first of all we will check whether the model state is valid or not whether my data is valid or not then only i can save it to my database so using model state and is valid property we will check it now if it is valid what we are going to do we are going to add this area model in our database so for that what we have to say db dot areas dot add model okay and don't forget to say db dot save changes okay so this save changes will generate an insert command now if this happens means my model state is valid then i add the area then i save the changes to the database then what we have to do we have to redirect to our index action method so here i'll say return redirect to action index so it will show you me it will show you the index view which is nothing but a listing of your areas now if model state is not valid we are going to display the message error message in our validation summary and for that what we have to say model state dot add model error now it is model level error so keep this part empty and display the error message that is invalid data now here if your data means if you are performing any invalid options sorry if your model state is invalid we are displaying the error message and again we are going to display the same view to the user that is create view okay now what precaution you can do here you can wrap this section in try catch block so if there is an error while saving a record so you can track it or you can display the error message to the user sorry surround with okay let us do this manually so here i'll say try catch okay if there is an error again we are going to display the error message using model state dot add model error so it will display me the error message or invalidation summary so invalid operation okay now again if there is an error what we want to do we want to keep it on a same view so here i'll say return view if there is an error we are not redirecting to index view but here if everything goes right what i have to do i have to redirect to index view okay so i hope you got this hmm? 
now let us complete our action method curly braces now everything is right let us revise this code what we did we collected our entire model using complex binding complex binding concept then we check our model state if it is valid then we added that record to our areas db set property then we save these changes to the database and we redirect to our index view if there is an error performing this operation then we are displaying the error message in our validation summary helper and we are keeping on the same view again if my model state is invalid we are displaying that our data is invalid and again we are keeping on the same view so let us try this part let us switch to index view so first of all we will display the index view to the user and there is a link to a create view see this will switch to a create view now look at here so there is some problem bootstrap class is not applied to here let us switch to our create view okay actually this part is not necessary html attribute is equal to let me remove this and again one more new is not required extra curly bracket is there so it is required for the editor for but for drop down list it is not required so let us refresh our page see look at here now it is perfect now if i say click and if i do not enter anything okay only for city id this validation message get displayed but for rest of the two field it is not displayed okay so what we have to do we have to specify the data annotation on this class on this entity class okay so we will add it but first of all uh, we will check whether we, whether our record get added or not so let us say test say mumbai and pin code is say something like this say create see look at here this record get added okay so it is working perfectly fine but what we have to do for error messages we have to add the data annotation here okay so for that you have to add system dot component model dot data annotations namespace so for city id why it is showing you the error message because it is of type value type that is integer that's why it is showing string is reference type so it is accepting it so here i have to say required and specify the error message city is blank okay now same data annotation i have to apply for my pin code also you can specify the error message and you know that how to do this now see again one thing is missing in our create post action method supports if there is an error you want to keep in on keep on same view and at that time also your city drop down list should get populated so what we have to do here also before displaying the view we have to display the we have to pass the city list through view back then only that drop down list get populated okay so i hope you got this now let us have look to edit part so when i click over here as you can see in a bottom left corner okay have a look to the generated url so it is area slash edit slash five for next one it is area slash edit slash six means i should write a method in such a way that it will accept the argument right so if you look at your index view look at here your id is nothing but your argument name or parameter name of your action method and we have to keep the name id or id again okay we cannot specify the different name if you specify the different name then specify that name here okay so i am going to keep a id argument so int id say suppose if you are going to say a id here so what you will do you will say a id here also okay so let us keep it id now what this 
edit method does or what this edit method will do it will find the record of specific id and it will show it on your view first okay so let us find the record using find method of our db set class so here i'll say area say model you can specify any name is equal to db dot areas dot find so id is going to be a primary key and find method accepts the primary key only so it will search on the primary key now what we will do we will pass this model to our view okay and again here i am not going to use or going to create another view we are going to use the create view only so since my action method name and view name is different what i have to do i have to specify my view name so create and i am going to make it a strongly type view so pass the model here okay now in our create view since we use a strongly type html helpers so what happened it automatically fetches a data from model and our html tags get populated with the values of model so let us have a look see now here what will i do i'll say edit see there is an error why there is an error because we are redirecting to the create view right and create view needs a view back to populate the drop down list so let me end this so again i have to pass a list of cities through view back in my edit view also so let us run this let me refresh this part yes say edit see it get populated here right it's quite easy hmm? so with the help of strongly type view and the concept of model binding everything is really very easy for us now when you click on this create okay what happened it should be posted to the edit method it should be posted to the edit post method and whatever changes you have done it should get stored in my database now as you can see here if we look at the page source see it will be posted to the edit action method but what is the problem here user may get confused that here the caption appear create here also the button caption is create so we have to change it say when you say create new at that time what happens look at here your html contains are empty but when you say edit at that time it is populated and if you observe your create and edit method see this create method generates a view and when you say return view you you are not passing anything but whenever you are saying or we are whenever you are generating a view from the edit action method you are passing the model okay so what we can do basically we are switching to single view that is create view so what we can do here we will check whether my model is null or not if it is null means i want to add a record because whenever i am displaying the create view i am not passing anything and whenever i am displaying the create view using this edit action method i am passing the model okay so with the help of this we can determine this so if my model is equal to equal to null then i'll say view back dot title is what create else i'll say view back dot title is equal to edit okay and here i'll use same view back here at the rate view back dot title okay sorry t i t l e 
and here according to the rule i should enclose it in curly braces okay now the next part is to change the caption of our submit button so here i generate a value using my view back dot title sorry t i t l e so actually what we did we check the model status whether it has value or not so if it is null that means i want to create new record okay and i store this create value in my view back dot title actually this value is going to be used in my layout view also so what we did we kept it in view back dot title and we use it everywhere that's it so let us check this see now we are editing as you can see from the url the edit area even my title also get changed because that view back dot title is used in layout to generate a title also and your caption also get changed okay now the next step is to write edit post method so http post public view result edit and here also using the concept of complex model binding we'll get the details of area directly now what we have to do see if you basically whenever we want to update any record what we did we actually find that record right obj is equal to db dot areas dot find based on the id say time being consider that id is 2 then what will i do i'll change the content say obj dot area name is equal to xxx pin code is equal to something okay so in this way we alter the changes okay but here we actually got a modified model we actually got a modified model okay so what we have to do here we have to mark this model or we have to change its entity state to modified because we are not following this process whenever you are finding that particular model so and then after you are changing it then your context class automatically mark it as a modified but here you are directly accepting the details in that model so it is not clear whether to modify it or whether to add it so here i want to modify it okay i want to modify that model so what will i what will i do i'll mark this model as modified by setting its entity state now how to do this we'll say db dot entry of which model area model then you will pass a object of it which is model object then you have to set its state using state property and assign the state dot modified so when you say db dot save changes at that time what happened your db context class recognize that the entity state is modified so it automatically generates update command for it so i hope you got this okay uh, in my entity framework tutorial i show you how to update the record in another way we first of all find that record and then we change it but here we directly got that model okay so what we have to do we have to just mark it as a modify that's it now if this process is successful again i'll say return redirect to action index so here also you can check for model state okay here also you can uh, enclose this part in try catch block as we did it in our create method okay so due to time limitation i am not going to add this part okay so try it yourself so action result because we are returning redirect to action or you can directly say redirect to root result also so let us run this See, let me click here so edit view get generated now here what will i say 
1111111 so we change the area of pin code of area code to say edit so there is an error now let us see why this error occur see as you can see here additional information in additional information store update insert or delete statement affected an unexpected number of rows zeros okay so let us check our model data see in area id zero appears here okay now what it means there is no record of zero id and what it means we didn't pass area id from our view that is the problem okay now what we have to do for this we have to switch to our create view and as you can see here there is no html helper for area id that will store its area area id value so what i'm going to do here i'm going to add one hidden field for area id and for that i am going to use html helper that is hidden for strongly type html helper and here i'll say model goes to model dot area id okay now this will have a value okay now let us terminate this and what we will do we will run it again let me put a breakpoint here so we can observe the output okay let us say edit now here i'll change the pin code and say edit now look at the content area id is what 5 so we do not want to display that area id but our model requires it for update operation so how we specified it we specified it in the form of hidden fields that's it now just run this okay it get executed successfully as you can see here the area id of code rule get changed okay now let us write a code for a delete operation now for that we are going to use the delete method as you can see on left top sorry left bottom corner url get generated that is area slash delete slash 5 so 5 is nothing but a id and delete is nothing but a action method name so what we have to do let us have looked our index view see index view also specified our action method name as delete so if you want to alter the action method name you can change it here and same action method name will appear in our controller even delete action method is going to accept the argument okay which is nothing but a area id and from that area id we will first of all find the record of our area and then we will remove that record so let us do this process say int uh, let me terminate this first so here i'll say int id okay now first of all we will find that record using find method so area model is equal to db dot areas dot find we'll say id okay we will check against null value if model is equal to equal to null then definitely we can't do anything we again redirect to the same action method that is return redirect to action index and if we got it what we will do we will remove that record from the database using db dot areas dot remove method we will pass this model and then we will save the changes to the database so this will automatically executes the delete command and again we are redirecting to the same action method that is index action method so what will i do instead of writing this lengthy code i'll say if model is not equal to null then only do this right because if model is null we are not going to do anything 
So if model is not equal to null, then do this and redirect to the action method. Okay. So let us check this code. So let us say area slash index. Now let us delete this test record. See it get deleted successfully and as well as the changes are affected on our index view also. So I hope you enjoy this video quite lengthy but all the operations are covered. But it is very simple application and what is the drawback of this application? that we are specifying the data annotations for validation on our data model okay this is what this is our data entity class we should not define this data annotation on a data model okay so it should appear on our view model so in next video we'll see how to create a three tier architecture and in that we are going to separate each and every layer that is data access layer business logic layer and our view basically again our controller should not contain this logic okay controller should not contain the logic for database programming it should appear in our business logic layer so in next video we are going to see this part in detail now what you have to do in this part we have to add the validation part here okay means as we did for our create method we checked against we checked the model state uh, property model state is valid property then we displayed the error message in validation summary using model state dot add model error we wrap our code in try catch block so please add that code and do the practice of a same example so thank you